All right, as we know, the big fight, UFC 270, the first pay-per-view of the year is happening this weekend, and they don't get much bigger than this one because the undisputed heavyweight championship is on the line, and we've got two massive guys. We've got the undisputed champion, Francis Ngannou, the predator, the hard-hitting one-punch KO guy, the guy who hits harder than anybody else that's ever fought inside the UFC. He punches the equivalent of a Ford Escort hitting you at 75 miles an hour, something like that, and he's taking on the interim heavyweight champion, okay, Cyril Garn, a man that is very big, very athletic, very agile, moves well on his feet, excellent in-and-out movement, maybe a little more technical, maybe a little more agile you know maybe the better athlete but still two guys undisputed champ interim champion they're both gigantic and then on top of it all they used to be training partners okay so there is bad blood there is a lot of personal politics going on okay there's training footage that has been leaked there is feelings at stake here okay listen at the end of the day these guys used to be training partners at the MMA factory in Paris. So a long time ago, when these guys were both dreaming of becoming professional fighters, when they were both dreaming that one day we're going to get to the UFC and we're going to turn this dream into a reality, they're fighting, they're sparring, they're trying to go as hard as possible, they're trying to be the best they can be. And when you're in that situation, if, you're, if you really want to become a professional fighter, when you're in the training room, you want to pick the best guy that you can train with, Right? If you're a pretender, then maybe you avoid the good guys. You pick on some little guys, you know what I mean? You, you pick on someone that's not very good. Say, oh, come on, let's do a couple of rounds. But if you want to get to the top, you're looking for the best opposition. The reason I'm saying this, the point of it all is that you better uh, uh, believe it, that Cyril Garn and Francis Ngannou sparred with each other a lot. Because, number one, they're both gigantic men. You're not going to find too many men that are going to willing to stand and spar with those guys. So, they know each other inside and out. Now, Francis left the MMA factory, came out to Las Vegas. He's training at Extreme Couture now. And I think maybe... The coach there, Fernand Lopez, maybe that pissed them off a little bit. It normally does. Even though they're being too polite and too gracious to say anything, when somebody leaves your gym and goes away to somewhere else, it annoys you a little bit, okay? And now... Their guy, Cyril Garn, is going to fight him. So there's a lot at stake here. There's pride, there's politics, there's friendship. And talking of friendship, Cyril Garn, I mean, he has not talked trash. And by the way, the sparring footage has come out. It has been leaked, for want of a better word. And uh, Francis Ngannou came out and said, look, listen, this sparring footage is manipulated. And he kind of laughed about it and he said, it's, it's wild. He said, because when that sparring footage was recorded, I was helping Cyril Garn get ready for a fight. So therefore, there was a lot of him doing well and I was being a good training partner. And they've only released the good parts of it, the parts that make Cyril look good. He said, oh, it's funny. They're not releasing all the sparring footage out there when I was having success against Cyril Garn. And i got to be honest, I believe Francis there. I don't believe it was manufactured. What I mean is I believe there probably had to have been times when Francis got the better of each other in sparring because that's what happens when you spar with somebody you know and you're both good you're both equally matched you're both equal size and athletic ability some days well, well you have good days and bad days some days Cyril might have got the better some days it might have been Francis you know so Maybe when they released that footage, maybe there was a bit of gamesmanship. But so what, at the end of the day, you know? It, it does make it a little interesting, though. It will be interesting coming into this one because it's a little spicier. Because even though both men, they're being very cordial. They're not coming out, they're not talking shit, they're not calling each other names. But make no mistake, these guys do not like one another. Remember at UFC 268 backstage, after the fights... Francis Ngannou come walking by and he saw Fernand Lopez, he saw Cyril Garn. That's his old coach, that's his old sparring partner. And yeah, they're going to fire, but at least you'd still, all right, mate, how you doing? Your little nod, a little fist bump, a little wink, a little whatever, a little, hey, I'll see you soon, boy, or something like that. No, nothing. Stoic, straightforward, right? Didn't even acknowledge him. Why is that? Because there's bad blood. And now Cyril Garn isn't talking trash. He's not talking shit. But he is saying some things that if I was Francis Ngannou, I'd have an issue with, right? He is out there saying, let me get this right. He says, uh, he's saying that basically Francis doesn't have any friends, which is a really like backhanded insult. Do you know what I mean? It's like, he's saying he's not popular. You know, he says, uh, he says yeah, he's, uh, he doesn't have a lot of friends. Uh, this is my opinion. Uh, this is my feeling. Uh, 
he doesn't really have a lot of friends in my gym he did maybe five years something like this but uh, no he does not have a lot of friends don't worry I'm not gonna do a French accent any longer he says it was already complicated in the last camp no it's better it was uh, already complicated in the last camp with Fernand but he came back every time to do the camp maybe he found something better in Las Vegas I can't do a French accent I'm sorry certainly not one that a six foot five Cyril Garn would approve of apologies Cyril um, but it is interesting. So he's saying he's got no friends and stuff. That's kind of, you know, that's a, it's a bit of epic shit talk if I've ever saw that. Because he's insulting him without coming out and insulting him, you know. And then they're putting out the sparring footage, whether or not they did it or not. It's out there. People have seen it. Uh, and it's always interesting when you've got two guys that are going to fight that have sparred one another. Because there's bad blood there. There's feelings there. There is, there's, they know each other. And I know from experience, and it's happened throughout history. Remember Chuck Liddell and Tito Ortiz back in the day, they sparred with each other. Chuck Liddell came out and said, I used to beat the shit out of him. No wonder Tito doesn't want to fight me. Dana White came out and said, I saw the sparring sessions, because I think he used to manage both of them. He said, I saw the sparring sessions. Chuck would beat the shit out of Tito. And then, of course, when they did fight, Chuck was victorious. Uh, what else have we got? Well, there's John Jones and Rashad Evans. They were both training partners at Greg Jackson's in Albuquerque. And then um, Rashad was the champion. And John Jones was asked in an interview, he said, oh, would you ever fight Rashad? And he said, well, I'd fight him if he was the champ. And of course, he did become the champ and they did fight. Uh, and again, a lot of bad blood there because they were friends. They were training partners. They were helping each other. They were brothers. And now they're fucking enemies. Of course there's bad blood. But they're going to be too polite, too cordial to say that. Another situation was with me and Luke Rockhold. We weren't brothers. We weren't even training partners. But we did spar with one another one day. Luke came down to uh, the Ruka gym. We sparred with one another. And regardless of whatever he wants to say, right... I beat the shit out of him that day. And it is what it is. It was just a sparring session. I didn't look into it too much other than knowing that I would beat you in a fight because generally you would beat them in a fight if you win in sparring. But it doesn't always work like that because you have good days and you have bad days. But hold on, back to Rockhold. So I was in New York and I was doing a TV show and on that TV show they said, oh, and we heard that uh, you had a sparring session with Luke Rockhold. How did that go? And Luke was the strike force champion at the time, and I'm not one to talk shit. So I said, I said, oh, I shouldn't talk about that. But put it like this. I'm now the unofficial strike force champion. It was just a joke. Luke did not like it. And to be fair, I don't think I would have liked it either. I would have been pissed off. I would have been offended. I would have wanted to fight that guy. And that's what happened. And when we fought, Luke beat me. Now, of course, I was blind in one eye. And then actually, with all the blood, I was blind in this eye. But still, whatever. It is what it is. Then we fought again, and I beat him then. The point of me saying all this is that you can't really put too much stock in sparring footage or when you sparred with one another because every single day is different. Every time you fight, even if you beat someone the first time, you're not guaranteed to beat them a second time. All right, maybe if you're just way better, if you're way better, you're way better and you probably will win. But if two guys are kind of evenly matched, and these guys are in terms of size and power, Francis is more powerful, but Cyril Garn is still powerful, okay? Um... Cyril Garn probably moves better, but Francis Ngannou can still move. You know what I mean? So there's many ways you can skin this cat. There's many ways you can break this down, okay? But just because Cyril, in one little piece of potentially manufactured and manipulated sparring footage, got the better of Francis Ngannou, doesn't mean that that's how the fight is going to go down. But I tell you what it does mean. It means that the bad blood is real. It means that when these two step into the octagon, they're going to fight one another because there's a lot at stake. There is pride. There is personal feelings. And that is now simmering inside. They were friends and now they're enemies and whether or not they want to admit it, that is how they both feel about one another. And it's so raw and it's so sensitive that neither man will even acknowledge it. It's weird. There's like some weird silence around it all. Apart from Cyril Garn going out there, yes, uh, this guy he has uh, no friends, which is not a very nice thing to say. And, Sir, and Francis Ngarno is out there saying that it was manipulated footage. So obviously he has a lot to prove. And guess what? They are going to fight this fucking Saturday at the Honda Center. I'll be there. And it's going to be an absolutely massive, insane, intense fight. And I can't wait for it. Hopefully it's not like Francis Ngannou versus Derek Lewis. If it is, disregard everything I said in this video. Anyway, thanks for watching. Do me a favor, subscribe, ring the bell. I'm excited for the fight. Can you tell? Anyway, have a good one, people. I'll catch you soon.